What's up with it Raider Nation? It's your boy Raider Honcho and I'm back with a brand new video for you. Alright guys, get right into it. You already know the vibes, you already know what type of time I'm on. If you're not a subscriber to the channel, well damn, subscribe to the channel. Also hit me up on Instagram and Twitter, both at Raider Honcho. And don't forget to hit them likes, man. Really appreciate that. Now, yesterday was gut-wrenching. Yesterday was terrible. Last night was awful. Terrible to be a part of. Emotions are everywhere. Just a heartbreaking way to lose a game. Losing sucks in general. But to lose a game that you, that you should win sucks even more. To lose by one point sucks even more, okay? I think it's very important though for me as a content creator and somebody that's trying to have a platform is to take my emotions out of my analysis, out of my analytics. Take my emotions out of that. Now as a fan, you can be emotional. I can be emotional. But when it comes to making decisions and, and breaking down stats and breaking down films, you have to kind of leave your emotions at the door because you can't become irrational, you can't become illogical, and sometimes emotions do that. So as a fan, I was super emotional about the game last night. But as somebody who has a platform, I'm going to leave my emotions out of it and try to just use logic and use facts and use the numbers to break down what I'm saying today, right? So, there's plenty of things to talk about, but what we're going to start right now is the game plan. I thought the Raiders had the right game plan. I think Josh McDaniels deserves a little bit of credit for that. I think that the game plan was, was correct in being aggressive. You're on the road. There's no way you're going to go against the Chiefs and be able to just, like, be passive and hope things happen. You have to force things to happen, which is why in the first quarter, fourth and one, you go for it and you take a shot downfield and you get it. I love the play call. I love the play call on third and one at the end of the game when 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 Devontae Adams didn't get the toe tap down because that would have been a catch, put us a field goal range, range likely win the game for us. Um, I like the call to go for two points on uh, on the touchdown that would have gave us a one-point lead. Now, listen, when I say I like the idea of doing it, that doesn't mean that I would have done it. I just wasn't mad at it, okay? Like, I felt like if your game plan was to be aggressive from the start, you got to finish that way. I believe that you don't negotiate, you don't renegotiate. If your plan was to punch the Chiefs in the mouth, try to play with a lead the entire game, you got to continue to do that because we have lost games in the past because we came out aggressive and then tried to get conservative and it didn't work for us. So I appreciate and applaud and respect the idea of staying aggressive and sticking to your game plan and not renegotiate no matter what. I, I'm not mad at that because obviously if we get that two-point conversion, nobody's complaining. Everybody's happy. We're celebrating. If Devontae Adams catch that pass, everybody's celebrating. Everybody's happy. We probably win that game. So I'm not going to be the Monday morning quarterback and say we could have, would have, should have. I'm not going to be the the, the the hindsight 2020 guy who says we should have, could have, would have did that. It is what it is. I respected what they did out on the field. The execution wasn't there on, on every play, but at the end of the day, I like where they were trying to go and staying aggressive. So so I thought the game plan was good. Offensively, I thought the game plan was good. When you talk about the offense and you talk about uh, Derek Carr wasn't overly efficient. I thought Derek Carr played a pretty good game, though, especially when you look at the numbers. Uh, 19 for 30, 241, two touchdowns, no turnovers. I'm not mad at that. To me, Derek Carr did his job. He took care of the football. He put us in position to make plays. He put us in position to win the ball game. I think Derek Carr did his job. I don't have to sit there and say he had a great game, good game. I don't care about none of that. At the end of the day, the quarterback did what he was paid to do. Put us in a position to win the game and take care of the football. He did that. Josh Jacobs continues to be a man possessed. 21 carries, 150 four yards, one touchdown, averaging seven yards a carry, which makes it hard when you think of third and one and fourth and one. Why didn't you give the ball to Josh Jacobs? He could have got a yard, but when you think about it on the two-point conversion, he didn't get the yard or two yards that we needed, so it's a butterfly effect. You got to take the good with the bad. Uh, Devontae Adams, three catches, 124 yards, two touchdowns. Josh Jacobs had five catches in the past game, 39 yards. Um, Brandon Bolden had three catches. Hunter Renfro finally showed up with four catches, but an issue I have with the offense is Darren Waller. Point blank period. Darren Waller just looks uninterested. Looks like he doesn't want to be there. Uh, I'm not going to say he's not hurt or anything like that, but just the body language I don't like from Darren Waller. I told you in the preseason he didn't look like he was going to be a long-term Raider. He just doesn't look to be there right now. For whatever the reason is, it's not up for me to decide. I'm just judging off what I'm seeing. Looks like he does not want to be a part of this. Just looks like he doesn't want to be a part of that. I can be wrong, but... um. We're not getting what we want to get out of Waller. And I think that affected Mac Hollins last night because I would assume that the game plan had more Darren Waller involved. And when you take Darren Waller out, now you put Mac Hollins in positions. I just think he wasn't prepared last night like he had been because he had a couple chances to make plays last night and he didn't make them. Um, let's move on. I thought the offense did. I thought the offense played well. Def definitely well enough to win that game. Derek Carr's best performance of the season, in my opinion. Uh, the refs. Everybody wants to blame the refs. Get over it. 
The refs make bad calls. The refs make good calls. They're humans just like the rest of us. Get over it. We did not lose that game because of the referees last night. We did not lose that game because of the referees last night. We lost that game because we as a team did not do what it took to win the game. Period. End of discussion. I don't want to hear it. Yes, the refs made a bad call here. The refs made a bad call there. But at the end of the day, you were still on the field with a chance to win. The ball was in your hands. Devontae Adams got to make that catch. Devontae and Hunter Renfro can't run into each other. The line has to hold up when Derek Carr is play faking. When he turns around and sees a guy in his face. You can't have that. There are certain situations we could have changed for ourselves to win the game. Okay, and going into that... Let's talk about that damn defense that everybody wants to say is so goddamn good. The defense is not that damn good. Get over it. Get over it. The defense is not that damn good. Does the defense make plays? Yes. Is Max Crosby a hell of a player? Yes. Is Nate Hobbs a good player? Yes. But at the end of the day, as a collective, that defense is not playing well because they don't make any adjustments. And that's more on the coaches than it is the players. So don't come in here talking about Max Crosby did this, Nate Hobbs did that. I agree. Those are individual talents. We have talented football players on that defense. But as a defense, the scheme has not been good. Okay, our offense is ranked 8th right now in the NFL and our defense is ranked 28th. Stop being emotional about it. Stop being a bitch about it and listen to what it is. What it is that defense is not very good right now. And if it is good, it's not consistently good. Bottom line, you can cut this up. You can edit it. You can put it on Twitter. Everybody can call me a clown all you want. I don't care. I don't care. I get paid to coach defense. I know what the defense is supposed to do. I know what the job of the defense is. The defense is not doing their job for four quarters. Period. Get over it. Get unfollow, unsubscribe, do whatever you want to do. They are not doing their job for four quarters. That's the problem. It's not on the players at all times. It's on the coaching staff, but the players have to take accountability for missing tackles, for missing assignments, for trying to strip the ball and allowing the running back to get 10 more yards than he should get. That's on the players. They have to do a better job. We got some good players over there, no doubt about it. We got some players. Max Crosby might be a top 10 player on, in the NFL, period. He might be, but we're still losing games and we're still giving up almost 30 points a game. You got to take that into consideration when you're talking about why the Raiders are losing. Okay, we were up 17-0 in that game and ended up giving up 30 points. They scored 20-some points in two quarters. Okay, we were up 20 points against the Cardinals. Somehow came back and lost that game. So you got to put some of the accountability on the defense. And most of it has to go on Patrick Graham as a defensive coordinator, okay? Now, moving on. Everybody wants to fire Josh McDaniels. Well, I don't disagree. I don't disagree with firing Josh McDaniels. I just don't think that this game should be the indictment on Josh McDaniels. Because I thought Josh McDaniels put a good uh, um, game plan together for the offense. I do feel like Josh McDaniels is more of a coordinator gallivanting as a head coach. I don't know if he's a head coach because I don't know if he has the ability to make Players believe they're better than they are. I don't know if he has the ability to lead men. I don't know if he has the ability to get you to run through a wall. I don't know. That's what I'm saying. I don't know. But as of right now, there's too much talent on this team for this team to be one and four. The players have to take accountability, and so do the coaches. So I'm not saying we need to fire Josh McDaniels. I'm just saying if they did, I wouldn't be surprised. I wouldn't be mad at it. I just don't think last night should have been the indictment because I thought last night Josh McDaniels caught a pretty goddamn good game. Now, with all that being said, we're eight minutes in. I never do videos this long, but there's a lot of shit I had to say. The bottom line, the bottom line is, the bottom line is this. <sighs> the Raiders are 1-4. You are what your record is. You're at 1-14. You're playing bad football. Okay, period. You have moments of being good, but you're playing bad football. All right, you're not consistently good for four quarters and for a whole week. It's just, it just is what it is, guys. And with that being said, I think that you have to still... Allow the time for everybody to get on the same page. I've been saying that. The fact that Hunter Renfro ran into Devontae Adams shows you they're not on the same page yet. And if you want to get get rid of Josh McDaniels, fine. But understand that the more you get rid of people and bring new people in, the, the more you're setting back the curve of learning. The more you're setting back the continuity. The more you're doing that. We don't have time to do that. We have to get better now. We get a bye week. We get healthy. And I think we come back and, and go on a tear. I think we win four of our first five games out of the, uh, out of the break. I really believe that. I believe this team can still go 10-7 and, and make it to the playoffs. But at the end of the day, it's going to be one game at a time. But you can't neglect what the games are showing you. You can't neglect what the film is showing you. You let one guy score four touchdowns. Somebody has to make an adjustment. Hold him. Pull him. Tackle him. Do something. Somebody has to have some fight, some pride out there. And I just didn't see it last night from that defense for four quarters. For four quarters. So that's what I think. That's what I think. I want you to get down in the comments and let me know what you think, all right? If you like the video, like the video. If you like the content on this channel, subscribe to the channel. Hit me up on Instagram and Twitter, both at Raider Hancho. And until the next time, as always, Raider Hancho out.